today we're going to read Alice's Adventures in Wonderland. Chapter 1. Down the rabbit hole. Let's start. Alice was beginning to get very tired of sitting by, by her sister on the bank and having nothing to do. Once or twice she had peeped the, into the book her sister was reading, but it had no pictures and conversations in it. And what is the use of a book, thought Alice, without pictures of, or conversations. So she was considering in her own mind, as well as she could, for the day made her feel very sleepy and stupid. Whatever the pleasure of making a daisy chain would be worth the trouble of getting up and picking the daisies. When suddenly a white rabbit with pink eyes ran uh, close up to her. There was nothing so very remarkable in that, nor did Alice think it so very much of the way to hear the rabbit say to itself, Oh dear, oh dear, I shall be late. When she thought it over afterwards, it occurred to her that she ought to have wondered at this, but at the time it seemed all quite natural. But when the rabbit actually took a watch out of his out of its waistcoat pocket and looked at it and then hurried on, Alice started to her feet for it flashed across her mind that she had never seen before a rabbit with either waistcoat pocket or a watch to take out of it. Burning with curiosity, she ran across the field after it. Fortunately, she was in just in time to see it pop down a large rabbit hole under the hedge. Down went Alice after it, never once considering how in the world she was to get out again. The rabbit hole went straight on like a tunnel for some way and then dipped suddenly down, so suddenly that Alice could not stop, stop and found herself falling down a very deep well. Either the well was very deep or she fell very slowly. For she had plenty of time as she went down to look about her and to wonder what is going to happen next. First, she tried to look down and make out what she was coming to, but it was too dark to see anything. Then she looked at the sides of the well and noticed that they were filled with cupboards and bookshelves and maps and pictures hung upon pegs. So, as she passed down, uh, she took a jar from one of the shelves as she passed. It was labeled orange marmalade, but to her great disappointment, it was empty. She did not like to drop the jar for fear of killing somebody, so managed to put it into one of the cupboards as she fell past it. Well thought Alice to herself, after such a fall as this, I shall think nothing of tumbling downstairs. How brave they'll all think me at home. Why, I won't say anything about it, even if I fell off the top of the house, which was very likely true. Down, down, down. Would the fall never come to the end, I wonder? And how many miles I, was, I have fallen this, by this time? She said aloud. I must get somewhere near the center of the earth. Let me see, that would be 4,000 miles down. So I think for, you see, Alice had learned several, several things of the sort in her lessons in the schoolroom. And she thought this was not a very good opportunity for showing off on her knowledge as there was no one to listen to her still it was very good to practice to say it over yes that's about the right distance but when i wonder what latitude or longitude i've got to alice had no idea what latitude was or longitude either but thought 
they were nice grand words to say. Presently, she had began again. I wonder if I, if I shall fall right through the earth. How funny it will seem to come out among the people that walk with their heads downward. The antipathies, I think. She was rather glad there was no one listening to this time, as it didn't sound at all the right word. But I shall have to ask them what the name of their country is, you know. Please, ma'am, is this New Zealand or, or Australia? And she tried to curtsy as she spoke. Fancy curtsying as you're falling through the air. Do you think you could manage it? And what an ignorant little girl she'll think me for asking. No, it'll never do to ask. Perhaps I shall see it written up somewhere. Down, down, down. There was nothing else to do. So Alice soon began talking again. Dina missed me very much tonight, I should think. Dina was the cat. Hope they'll remember her saucer of milk at tea time. Dina, my dear, I wish you could be down here with me. There, were, there are no mice in the air, I'm afraid, but you might catch a bat. And that's very like a mouse, you know. But cats, do cats eat bats, I wonder? And here Alice began to get very sleepy. And went on saying to herself, in a dreamy sort of way, Two cats eat bats. Two cats eat bats. And sometimes, two bats eat cats. For you see, as she couldn't answer either question, didn't, it didn't much matter which way she put it, she felt that she was dozing off and had just begun to dream that she was walking hand in hand with Dina and saying to her very earnestly, Now, Dina, tell me the truth. Did you ever eat a bat? When suddenly, thump, thump, down she came upon a heap of sticks and dry leaves, and the fall was over. Alice was not a bit hurt as she jumped up on her onto her feet in a moment. She looked up, but it was all dark overhead. Before her was another long passage, and the white rabbit was still in sight, hurrying down it. There was not a moment to be lost. Away went Alice like the wind, and was just in time to hear it say as it turned the corner. Oh, my ears and whiskers, how late it's getting! She was close behind it, and when she turned the corner, but the rabbit was no longer to be seen. She found herself in a long hall, which was lit up by a row of lamps hanging down from the roof. They were all locked when Alice had been all the way down to the side and up the other, trying every door. She walked sadly down the middle, wondering how she was ever to get out again. This is the end of part one, and we'll continue tomorrow in part two of Alice's Adventures in Wonderland. Until next time, it was me, Mira. Bye-bye!